Welcome everyone, make yourself comfortable. For the next couple of minutes, we'll embark on a journey to the core. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to implement some basic validations with the help of Hibernate Validator. As you might have guessed, the first thing we are going to do is to introduce the dependencies into our project. We are defining two properties, the Hibernate Validator version and the Jakarta EL version. Both of them are going to be compilation dependencies. The first is the Hibernate Validator and the second one is a Jakarta expression language implementation, which is required by Hibernate Validator in order to evaluate dynamic expression in constraints violation messages. Finally, we are going to introduce the Hibernate Validator annotation processor. This is going to help us avoiding mistakes when using the validation annotations. Now, let's cover some basic annotations. Let's start with the interfaces. Here in product, we're saying that get brand, get name, and get description are not going to be empty. Sellable product will inherit the validations we just introduced into product and it can contain validations itself, like this one for get price, which must be positive or zero. Similarly, in a stockable product, we are going to inherit the validation in sellable product and we are going to define cost as positive or zero. In inventory, the story is similar, both get total cost value and get total price value should be positive or zero, and the same thing in shopping cart. In the can contain products interface, we're going to say that the return value of the get products method should not be null, and we're going to validate the content of the set. So the set must have valid P, which are products or anything that extend product. The return value of get amount must be positive of zero. His parameter must not be a null and should be a valid P, and so on. Now, in the user class, we are going to validate the constructor's parameters. The minimum allowed value for ID should be one. And here we are passing a custom message. This is a placeholder and it reference in value, which is one in this particular case. This is possible thanks to the Jakarta expression language implementation we included into the POM. Now, name should not be empty and should be a string of size between 2 and 30. Shopping cart should not be null and the same thing for the other constructor. Finally, we are validating the return values for the getName and getShoppingCart methods. In the implementation package, only the default factory is public. Here, we are not using any validations because all the members are static. Only no static member can be validated. If I introduce a validation like this one and I compile the project, I get this error. Only no static method may be annotated with constraint annotations. We are getting this error message because we included the Hibernate Validator annotation processor into the POM. We can annotate classes or even interfaces for validating their implementations. Here we are annotating a stockable product with the prices greater than or equal to cost annotation, which is a custom validation. Creating a custom validation is quite simple. First, the annotation, which is a normal Java annotation that must follow a particular structure. We have to implement the constraint annotation for the related validator, and it's good practice to use the documented annotation for this validation to appear in the Java docs of that annotated target. We must define a message, a groups, and a payload members, and optionally, a list annotation for this custom annotation to be implemented in the same target multiple times. The validator must implement the constraint validator interface. The first type parameter is the custom annotation and the second one is the target for this validation. 
In the is valid method, we have the logic behind the validation. We are verifying that the price is greater than or equal to the cost. If that's not the case, we get a constraint validator context. We disable the default constraint violation and we construct our custom one. We can provide parameters to the message and we must provide the template for the violation message. After that, we include the constraint violation and we return if the constraints is valid or not. The last piece is the message itself. On the resources, we have a property files for that. We relate the message through the name and this is the content of the message. As you can see, we are using placeholder for the parameters we are passing here. Now, let's perform the actual validations. The way we are going to do this is with the help of a testing class. We need a validator that we can get from a validator factory and an executable validator as well for method a constructor invocation. First, we create a stockable product which is valid and we validate it with the help of the validator and his validate method. The validate method returns a set of constraint violations. Since this is a valid stockable product, such a set should be empty. Next, we create a bad stockable product and we validate it, extract the messages for the constraint violations and we verify that all of them correspond to the violation we introduced. We can validate a method call as well. Here, we are going to validate the getName method. You can see it here in his interface. The getName method should return a non empty string. We pass the instance, the method that will be called, and an object array with the arguments for the method. Only one violation should exist and the message should be this one and the root cause, as you should guess, is the return value for the getName method. Now let's create a stockable product which cost is greater than the price, which will trigger our custom validation. As you can see, only one violation should exist and the message is this one. This is the cost and this is the price. The message matches the one that we introduced for our custom validation. Next, let's validate a constructor invocation. We use the executable validator again and we pass to the validate constructor parameter method a constructor that we get through the types of the parameters such a constructor receives and we pass an object array with the arguments for the constructor. 0 for the ID, X for the name, and 0 for the shopping cart. We extract the messages, and here, for example, is the custom message we are using for the user ID, as you can see here. And these are the default messages for the other validations. Now we're going to create a new stockable product which cost is negative. This is for triggering a cascade validation. Here we are going to use executable validator again and we are going to validate the parameters for a method. We pass a new inventory and we are going to call the set products method, passing to it the bad product. Only one violation should exist for the negative cost and you can see here in the root cost that the fault for this validation to fail is the cost of the first element of the first argument of this set products method. And this violation is produced by this validation in this type parameter in the collection that set products receive as a parameter. But these validations are only performed if we do it explicitly on our test, for example, making them not very useful to be honest. In the next video, we will cover how to automatically and dynamically execute them with the help of aspect J. National term. 
Download the code from the link in the description and experiment with all kinds of validations. Remember to share your experience in the comments and as always, have fun. Thank you for joining me on my journey to the core. See you soon.